Volker, you're good at those things. <laughs> so, hi everybody. We are releasing WhatsApp 7 8, Build 7, and we want to show you the new features that we have created uh, in the last week or so, and uh, we just show it to you, and maybe next time you can join us and ask questions, just like I do now. So let's go ahead, Dion, and show us the one that I'm interested in, which is the advanced strategy settings. Where do I find it? What can I do? You find it in the strategy window under strategy settings, this button right here, advanced settings. Uh, cool. So clicking this will change this interface and show you a few new options here. Good. Something that I found is that if you if you look at the right side and you look at the maximum open position, if you see that maximum open position per, I don't know what it, it says. Yeah, I can only scroll down if I increase that window per simple. Cool. Good. So this is where I find it. So what can I do there? I mean, I can retain the NSF positions. What does that mean? Well, notice there's a help link here. So people who are, want more information about these advanced settings can click here. The NSF positions are positions that you'll get signals for in a back test, but you won't have enough simulated account equity to take those positions. So the default is to kind of keep them uh, going so your buy and sell state of the system is uh, preserved correctly. So those, even though the simulation couldn't fill that position, it's still kept alive and, and kept going. And as your strategy executes, it will still think that it has an open position, even though it didn't have enough equity for it. So that's the default option. If you turn that off by unchecking this, then those NSF non-sufficient funds positions will just get discarded. So your strategy then might take a new buy signal uh, prematurely. Uh, that's the side effect of that. So it'll be in a state where it's, it doesn't have a position anymore. So it may then take another position as new and buy think, signals come in. And I think the beauty of this one is now it is on a per system um, based and not a global setting. So I can have a system that has those, um, retains those NSF positions and the next one doesn't have it. Is that correct? Yeah, it'll be stored with the strategy. Yeah, that's cool. So it, I, I can have a choice and not like, I think before it was like global and now it's individual. Right. So in this one, for example, if we go to advanced settings, this one I'll turn off and then I'll save it. And this one, it's turned off. This one, it's turned on. So yeah, it's saved with the strategy. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Good. So the next so thing is this uh, use granular limit stop processing. So this is useful if you have a strategy that submits a bunch of limit orders or stop orders. Uh, but normally, if you're back testing on the NASDAQ 100, for example, with 100 symbols, your strategy might submit 100 orders a day but you don't have enough capital to take all of those orders. So they're just, uh, if there's too many signals for your capital, so maybe you have enough simulated money to take five positions, a wealth level, just randomly determine which ones to take. So each time you run the strategy, you may get a different result. But with this setting, what it'll do it is it will use intraday data based on this scale that you specify here 
if it's available, if you have an intraday provider that can deliver that data, it'll use the intraday data and look and see when during the day for each symbol that limit would have gotten filled and it'll use that to accurately simulate which of those positions to actually fill in the in the day wow that 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 is actually amazing so um so it could possibly be that um I have in the NASDAQ 100, maybe I have 50 symbols that I have intraday data and 50 symbols I don't have intraday data. So what does Wealth Lab do then? Well, first of all, the, the intraday data will come from your, if you click the data manager and then go to historical providers, it will use the providers that you've checked off here. So I hear I have IQ feeds. So if I check off IQ feed, then it will be able to get intraday data from IQ feed. Uh, there's a number of possible providers and extensions that somebody might have, but you'll need to have an intraday historical provider uh, that would be able to deliver that data. And if you have some symbols for which intraday data is not available, it will just fall back on the old method and it won't be able to use it, the intraday data for this uh, granular processing here. Hmm. Yeah, but that's a cool, really good feature. It makes it, it makes backtesting even more realistic besides the um, uh, transaction weight feature that WhatsApp has, uh, where you can basically reduce the amount of signals Okay, so that, that's the indicator. advanced settings. Um, Robert, what else do we have in build? Let's see, we've got, well, the strategy monitor. I, I, in fact, uh, when we started the meeting, I was trying to set up for the strategy monitor, and uh, I don't think I've got it. I've got, a, I've got the run set up now. Um, but we'll, let's come, to, come back to that in five minutes because it's, it's scheduled for the, the next run at 9.15 or 10.15, 9.15 local. Okay, but you're not sharing your screen, are you? No, I would have to share it, I guess, to, to, to show that. So we'll have to come back to that. Okay. So Let's you'll see the strategy monitor update. What else What else do we have here we've in got, builds? We've got to change the last, last position and last open position. Here, mm -hmm. change that a little bit. Yeah, we did change last position. It was a bit confusing because it was returning only the last open position. Uh, previously in Wealth Lab 6, last position would return the last position, whether it's open or closed. So we changed the behavior of that to get back in line with how Wealth Lab 6 was doing it. And then we added last open position to, in case you do want to only access the last open position. So that's that change there. It might impact your strategies. So just take a look uh, in your strategies if you're using last position and kind of be aware of that. We added a couple of indicators, MACD Classic, based on a request from our forum. I'll go to indicators here and type in my filter MAC. So here's all my MACD indicators and here's our MACD classic. We can even compare that to the primary MACD. Let's see how, how they differ. MACD classic just uses uh, some kind of hard-coded uh, constants for calculating the MACD that uh, the, the original creator of the MACD used in the calculation. Uh, so that's, a, that's the MACD classic. And uh, the regular old MACD gives you a couple of period parameters that you can use. So period 12 and 26 
most closely matches kind of these hard-coded parameters of the MACD classic. That's why these two lines are very similar. So what else did we add? We, we introduced the community library here. Uh, so we have four indicators right now on community and the source code of all of these will also be made available on a separate GitHub repository that, that we'll be setting up. And whenever there's community members that contribute new components to WealthLab, we'll add them to this community library as an open source project. Oh, that's cool. That's an amazing thing. Lots of parameters in this one. <laughs> yeah, there was quite a bit of discussion on these swing indicators on the forum, and they were, you know, quite well loved from what I was reading. So it's, you know, good we have these implemented. Yep. So Robert, how is that strategy monitor looking? Uh, I think we're going to have to come back to that one because we, okay, it's, yeah. Well, maybe I could set one up quickly here. Let me go to the strategy monitor. I'll drop in one of my tried and true strategies here. We'll give it, let's set it up to use Yahoo streaming, which is real time, but it's, it, it has a bit of lag. So it's not a very fast streaming provider. Um, and let's go, let's say one minute, and let's give it a, a data set of, of the Dow 30. Okay, so that's all set up. Now we can activate that. It's populating the data now. We can click this to view a log pane. So what it's doing now is it's getting the history for the one minute data for these 30 symbols. So it does it in two passes. So the first pass is complete. Now it's doing the second pass just to make sure that all of them are updated. Uh, it collected all of them from IQ feed. And it set the next run to 1017. But didn't you say you used Yahoo data? Because it's now Using I'm using data. Yahoo for streaming. Yahoo oh. does not provide intraday historical data. Oh, okay. So it got all of the historical data from IQ feed. So you can see it turn green now. So it's in the run. Um, it processed 10 of the symbols. So you can see here it ran the strategy a couple of different times, three times now, and these symbols, uh, it's got four symbols left. So if we were using IQ streaming, uh, this would all pretty much be over at this point. I mean, it, the strategy monitor with IQ feed runs extremely fast, but I don't have uh, the real time IQ feed subscription going here. I have the delayed. That's why I'm running it on Yahoo, which is a bit uh, kind of laggy. So then you could even see it. It didn't complete all of the symbols. So two of them are still not processed. And now it's going in for another, another round basically. But the takeaway here now is that the strategy monitor, instead of running, you know, one by one, it's running on like batches of symbols. So let's take a closer look here. So it ran like on 22 symbols here. It ran in uh, about 400 milliseconds. So it's, uh, it's extremely fast. As long as you're using a good streaming provider like IQ Feed, your strategy monitor should be really great performance at this point. Can that's, I see, because this, it, it says again, two symbols left. Uh, is there some yeah, way I can see uh, which symbols are left? 
Oh, yeah. It was AMGM and Triple M. And yeah, this time it was AMG and an MMM. Before Last it was time it M &M. was MMM and AXP. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are great new features, really good, really cool. Um, it, it's, it's really amazing what WorldSlab 7 can do. New features coming every day, uh, bug get fixed, enhancements, amazing. So I look forward to see the next build with even more features. And guys, don't forget, we have a wish list where you can vote for features. And um, not saying that the first one will be done, but we, we will definitely look at the top 10 and then decide which one will be next. So go to the website, vote, and ask your friends to vote too if they have opinions and spread the word about World Sub 7. Hope to see you again here. Thanks, Dion. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, everybody. Nice. Bye. Bye.